I'm David Wilcock. I've been writing articles online about UFOs and forbidden science since 1996, after I was fortunate enough to hear firsthand testimony that we are not alone in 1993. I have also been writing my dreams down every morning since September 1992. Although most people don't think their dreams have any value, the last 18 years have proven to me that we all have a higher self guiding and directing our lives and ensuring that we meet up with whatever we create. People always ask me what can I do to help my cosmic evolution along. So I have some suggestions you may want to consider. First of all, all spiritual traditions say that we're here to learn love. I've seen abundant evidence in a variety of scientific studies that love is written into our genetic code. For example, Dr. Glenn Rhine found that love actually causes conformational changes in DNA. The DNA molecule actually heals itself in the presence of loving energy that is sent through intent. Another key point is service to others. One of the philosophical texts that I've used extensively in my work is called the Law of One series, five books that emerged in the early 1980s. In the Law of One, it spells out the genetic changes in the galaxy that propel us into this new world, which they call fourth density. They also do indicate that the time period of 2011 to 2013 is when we reach a quantum leap in this transitional process. Most importantly, they say that fourth density is a realm of existence on this planet that is 100 times more harmonious than what life on Earth is like now. In order to be ready to inhabit this new world, we must reach certain minimum requirements for what they call graduation. Those minimum requirements only involve having a 51% desire to be service to others rather than manipulating and controlling others or what they call service to self in order for us to be ready for graduation. When this same source was asked what is the best way to serve others, they said to seek the heart of the self. Again, I believe this refers to the fact that when you really understand your identity, it will not end at the boundary of your skin to the air. You begin looking into the faces of others and seeing yourself. And for that same reason, why would you want to manipulate or control them? To serve others is to help yourself. This also seems to appear in Eastern mysticism through the so-called vow of the Bodhisattva, where you say, I seek my own enlightenment for the sake of all beings. There's clear and undeniable evidence that this Bodhisattva vow allows you to resonate an energy field that actually changes how other people think and feel, such as the so-called Maharishi effect, where a group of 7,000 people in meditation actually exerted an effect on terrorism around the world to such a degree that there was a 72% reduction in the amount of terrorist activity that took place during the time that this group was meditating. Another area that I really prefer to look at is our agenda as souls. If you study the works of Dr. Michael Newton, such as in his books Destiny of Souls and Journey of Souls, he reports a process where he used hypnosis to regress people to the periods between their lives. Not just a past life regression, but an in-between life regression. When he did this, he found that everyone kept saying the same things about what they experienced in between lifetimes. And he collected this data over the course of 20 years, during which time it was remarkably consistent. I was astonished when I recently read Destiny and Journey of Souls and found out that the words that were given in these books fit with this Law of One philosophical material from the early 1980s so well that it seemed as if both of them were talking about the exact same cosmology, as if everyone on the other side of the veil knows that these things are true. The most important points that emerge in Dr. Michael Newton's books are that every one of us has a soul, and that soul is clearly aware that it has a spiritual agenda it wishes to fulfill in each lifetime. 
No matter how lost or confused we may feel that we are, even if we're homeless on the side of the street or desperately wrapped up in a world of addiction and pain and crime, we all know that we have a job on this planet and ultimately that job is to learn to love. And if we don't get it in one lifetime, we'll keep coming back over and over again. It seems that once we've done this enough times and we really get the point about loving others, that we go through graduation. This is what the 2012 prophecies are really about. The planet itself moves through an energetic transformation where if you're ready, you don't ever need to reincarnate again in this human body, but you move into a new world. Dr. Michael Newton's books explain that everyone's soul energy must learn to balance itself within the physical body. The energies of the physical body have their own biases, creating an egoic mind. That mind is based on the experiences, the traumas, and the expectations that you've built up throughout one lifetime. You also have a mind within your soul that is working behind the scenes to transmute your ego mind and raise it to a much higher level of evolution. Your soul's mind works its magic and will ultimately integrate and transform your personality in order for you to reach enlightenment. Another key concept that I would encourage you to explore is what I refer to as the fool's equation. This equation says that if I get X, whatever X might be, then I will be happy. Well, this is really silly because if you're wishing for something that hasn't happened yet and you decide that once that thing happens that you will be happy in the future, then you never claim any happiness in the now. So what I do is to turn that equation backwards. If I am whole, peaceful, and happy now, then I will get X, whatever it is that I want. Or as many others have said, you create a loving space within yourself, which then allows loving energy to fill it. Another very interesting clue that can help us evolve spiritually at a rapid speed can be found in the archetype within the tarot cards called the lovers. These archetypes, according to the law of one, actually represent patterns within the mind of the galaxy. The galaxy itself has set up these 22 patterns of thought that we are meant to evolve through as we become enlightened. The archetype known as the lovers features on the tarot card a woman, a man, and then over them, an angelic being. The deeper meaning behind this card is of a choice that we make within ourselves as to how we will approach our higher self. Do we see our higher self as a maiden, virginal and pure, or do we see it as a prostitute? If we treat our higher self as a maiden, then the idea is that we listen to what she wants and we learn to dance with her wishes accordingly in order to get what both of us want. Whereas if we treat our higher self as a prostitute, we barge in the door and say, this is what you're gonna do for me, and this is what I expect. Obviously, by treating the higher self as a maiden, you actually learn to tailor your expectations from life. So you're not just saying to the universe, gimme, gimme, gimme. You're actually learning to listen to what your higher self may have as an agenda for you. You may not immediately realize why these things are valuable, but the more that you learn to adopt them, the better off you're going to be. Another very important concept that really helps you prepare for this shift that we're now moving through is what I refer to as the original wound. I discovered a long time ago through deep meditation on the human condition that we all have the same basic wounding at the core of our soul. This wounding appears to be the root of all addictive and compulsive behaviors that we would ever get stuck in. This original wound is an illusion, but it becomes very compelling to us and it buries deep within our subconscious mind to the point that we don't even realize it's there. 
This wound comes from the sense that the Creator has abandoned us and we've been left exposed and unprotected on this planet. This wound comes from the fact that we often see our parents as if they were gods when we're a little child. Invariably, our parents are going to disappoint us and we're going to have painful experiences where we feel abandoned, left alone, that our needs are not being met, that nobody really seems to care about us, and we invariably project that same disappointment onto the Creator. This, in turn, leads to what I call the Wheel of Karma, where we keep repeating the same painful experiences over and over again. In fact, what always seems to happen is that new characters keep appearing in our lives who fulfill the same roles on a deep archetypal level as our parents once did. Now, we may not become conscious of this. We may not realize that that's what's happening to us. We think that these people in our lives are different one from the other. But we start to notice that it seems like we have bad luck or that there's a theme that keeps repeating in our lives. Why is it that I always end up here in the same spot and the same things keep happening over and over again? Isn't it ever going to change? Well, believe it or not, in my estimation, the universe is here to teach us love and forgiveness. And there's a very essential statement made within the Law of One series where it says, in forgiveness lies the stoppage of the Wheel of Karma. The Wheel of Karma represents this rotating series of experiences that we keep going through, where over and over again we meet with the result of what we've created. But it's only once we learn forgiveness that the wheel actually stops rotating when it reaches the top, and we don't have to keep collapsing into the dark night of the soul, as it's called, over and over again. Our lives become increasingly blessed and magical, and the experiences that used to make us seem so overwhelmed no longer have an effect on us, and therefore they don't need to happen. It's also extremely important to recognize that you have a higher self and to learn many of the practical tools that are available to you that will allow you to access that higher self. One of the basic beginner ways to access the higher self is to use various forms of divination, such as tarot cards. These types of divination work because as you hold the cards or whatever they are in your hand, you actually put an imprint within them from what I call the source field this blueprint of information that's written into our DNA and is written throughout the consciousness of the universe, you now have encoded that card or that object with a particular message. So then when you're holding the cards in your hands and you close your eyes and tune within and ask a question, your subconscious mind guided by your higher self will influence you to grab the right card at the right time. You then look up the meaning of the card in the book and sure enough, the message is going to be a direct answer to your question. As long as you don't overindulge in this and only use it when you need the information and you feel it's important, you can actually get very valuable messages from that. Another very central element of our evolution is in dreams. This is why every time I do a weekend workshop, I have an entire section devoted to sharing dreams from the audience and interpreting what they say in terms of symbolism. Our higher self uses dreams not just by accident, but to convey symbolic information that gives us clues to the issues that are affecting us in our lives right now. The big secret of dreams is that the entire environment is a reflection of yourself that means every character, every object, every event represents some aspect of your own being in symbolism. Many people have had dreams where there is doom or apocalyptic events on the earth, and they mistakenly believe these dreams are prophecies that say that the earth is about to be destroyed. But remember, the dream is not of the world. It's only of your world within your own mind and your own psyche. Therefore, when you see someone having these apocalyptic dreams, don't be dragged into the idea that this means something like that is going to happen to the world. Especially if these dreams are happening to you, 
you can reframe them to understand that what you are witnessing is a prophecy of the inevitable death of your ego. This is a part of your mind that has been clinging to this reductionist scientific skeptical belief that you're all alone in the universe and that once you die, that's it, and there's nothing more to who you are. It is only once the soul comes in and transforms this egoic mind, such as through the bounty of information that I'm sharing with you and that many other sources do as well, that you then experience a true awakening. You can let go of that part of yourself that doesn't want to forgive. You can let go of that part of yourself that criticizes others and that feels the need to protect the body and its own interests above all else. You can recognize that by helping others, you are helping yourself. And this is very key. In my opinion, the best way of all to access your higher consciousness is through meditation. By stilling your mind and moving into that state of perfect peace, you are able to reach that place where the thoughts within your mind are increasingly the thoughts of your higher self. One of the interesting facts that most people do not realize is that you do have thoughts within your mind that come from the higher self all the time. The key is that those thoughts are often being obscured by the fact that you are pulled into the past through guilt and pulled into the future through fear. If you can get past those influences and be here now, what begins to happen is that you awaken to the love that is present in this moment. You don't need to be so preoccupied with how you look or with what other people think about you because the haters are always going to want to hate. People are always going to want to laugh at you. But it doesn't mean that you need to see yourself in an unloving way. It's also important to remember that there is no right way to meditate. Keeping your back straight is important. You may have a mandala that you choose to repeat out loud or in your mind. You may also see a particular visual image or something else that you like to concentrate on in your head. But the real trick is to slow your mind down to the point where this constant chattering of what we call the ego has been subdued. Your mind becomes pure and empty from many of the thoughts that would normally preoccupy you. This doesn't mean that you never have any thoughts in your mind. They will always be there. What it does mean is that the thoughts that come through your mind are increasingly coming from cosmic consciousness. Within this state, you can seek answers to problems that you may have in your life and you will gain clarity. Of course, all of these various teachings have a firewall that will not allow you to reach your higher self unless you can punch through it. The firewall I'm speaking of is forgiveness. This ultimately is the key that everything else stems off of. True forgiveness is an acceptance of others, and by accepting others, you have forgiven and accepted yourself. The reason for this is that ultimately, your mind is the cosmic mind. The cosmic mind is your identity, and that means in truth there's only one of us here. Ultimately, we may come to discover that the galaxy itself is an intelligent being. Our human lives might not be so separate and isolated. They may not only occur on this one planet. The human template may be written through the fabric of the galaxy itself and will emerge again and again on any given planet where it can. Each one of us and our minds may be like cells in the mind of the galaxy. But until we awaken to the fact that this mind exists and that we are a fundamental part of it, we may have completely lost track of who we are and even more importantly, of who we can become. I'm David Wilcock. I thank you and I wish you all the best.